Hello, I'm Reverend Patricia Rainey, and I'm a musician. Welcome to Learning Music with Pat. I feel especially fortunate because I have studied music all my life. I've had the opportunity to do so. But I realize that a lot of people have not had that opportunity, and from time to time, somebody will come to me and say, I wish I knew more about music. And the need of knowing music is great, because we listen to it every day. And even if you were sitting in front of a television set all day long, you would still hear a lot of music. I've had a lot of experiences with people who don't understand music. I had a, a saxophone solo that I did about a month ago, and somebody thought I was playing a French horn. I played a solo on my bass recorder, which is this instrument right here, and somebody thought I was playing a saxophone because of the curve in the mouthpiece area. And most saxophones do have a similar curve, so they confuse that instrument with the saxophone. And I can tell you there's a great deal of difference between a bass recorder and a saxophone, but they didn't understand that. I've talked to people who are singing in choirs that don't know how to read the music that they're singing. And they have to depend upon people around them to, to guide them in terms of their pitch and their timing. Wouldn't it be interesting and nice to be able to look at an instrument and know what it is and also know what it sounds like? This is an alto recorder. Let me just play a couple of notes on it. A lot of people wouldn't recognize what that instrument is. Wouldn't it be interesting to be able to sit in front of a conductor as you're watching an orchestra, watch the hand movements and know what the movements mean? In other words, what is the conductor asking his or her orchestra to do? Wouldn't it be nice to take a piece of music, pick it up, and look at it, like I have a piece right here. This is an arrangement I've made of a song that my grandfather wrote. But wouldn't it be nice to look at that and know what it's going to sound like because you can read it like a book. Music can be read. It's symbols, just like words are symbols on a page. All of these things you can learn, and it's interesting to do that. Wouldn't it be nice to know some other things, such as what makes sound a tone? Now I'm going to demonstrate this. I have an inexpensive plastic ruler and I'm going to put it up against this card table and just hit it and you'll be able to hear a sound. It won't be a tone, it'll be a sound. I'll try it again. You can see the vibration, it's still vibrating. Vibrations make sound. But what's the difference between a sound like this and a tone? Well, I brought my sound tube with me. It's just a piece of plastic, it has ridges in it, and it has a little bulge in one end. And as I swing it around, you will be able to hear two distinct tones. They won't be just sounds, they'll be tones. So I'm going to begin and hold it real tight so people won't wish they were somewhere else. Listen to this. I was actually able to get three tones out of it. If I'd been able to swing it more, you'd be able to hear another sound. I was in a store where I bought this. It only cost me a dollar, and I kept hearing these sounds and wondering, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? And a small child had a tube just like this, and he was swinging it around in the aisle and getting all kinds of tones out of it. And it just made me think, if you're going to deal with music, you're dealing with tones. How do those tones happen? What is the difference between a higher tone and a lower tone? What is the difference between flats and sharps? How do you read music so that it makes sense? These are all things that you can learn. I am going to be teaching music here, and I'm going to do it in such a way that you can follow me. If you have an instrument, 
woodwind or brass, a lot of the things that I'm going to say will be applicable to those instruments, but especially the woodwinds, because those are the, are the instruments that I play. But also, if you want to follow along and you don't have an instrument but you would like to learn, I would suggest that you buy a C melody recorder. I happen to have three of them with me. Actually, I have more than three, but just to, to show you. This length, made out of plastic or made out of wood. The reason that I've chosen the recorders is that they have a two octave volume, they pitch well, they sound well, and just in case you're wondering, they are not a toy. Uh, it always irritates me a little to have people treat instruments like they're toys because they're not toys. And uh, the uh, C Melody Recorder is capable of playing a lot of very, very difficult music. I even make uh, arrangements, classical arrangements, on the C Melody. As a matter of fact, I've arranged three pieces from Handel's Messiah that I can play on a simple little instrument like this. The recorders are simple. They're easy to play, but you can learn a lot of basic music skills just by playing and, and learning on the recorder. They don't have the pads, they don't have uh, uh, key mechanisms, so that they're easy to master, but they pitch well and they sound well with each other. And there are recorder societies and orchestras where everybody in the orchestra plays a recorder. And in Europe, you have traveling uh, orchestras, and all they have are like 40 or so different recorders. And they can play very difficult music. So don't be put off by the simplicity of this instrument, because it really is a very good instrument. Now, there are also instruments that you can use that are recorder-like. They're not recorders, but they're simple instruments that finger a little like a recorder. I'm going to show you some instruments that I consider to be uh, melody flutes. I call them melody flutes because they're, they just have that same kind of recorder mechanism. Uh, for one thing, we have a tonette. A lot of students use this in school. It has a thumb hole in the back where you put your thumb, and it has a softer tone. I'll just play a few notes on it. It's not going to set the world on fire. That's the tonette. Then I have a little song flute, if I can find it, right here. This one comes to a point, and um, it also has about the same kind of, so uh, of tone with a thumb hole in the back. You can see it has a louder tone than the tonette does. Then we have the penny whistles. I brought two with me. Actually, I bought three with me, but I don't have them all on the table. Now, the penny whistles are made out of metal with a plastic mouthpiece. And you can play a tremendous amount of, in, of music on them. Sometimes they're called Irish flutes because they use them a lot to play Irish music. I'm just going to give you a, 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 a go, just going to try this and see what you get. You can play very difficult music on them. They come in different keys and in different sizes and they're they are uh, cylindrical in that they just go straight down. There is um, a sasuto flute. I brought one of them. They are tremendous flutes because they play a lot of really difficult music. They have wonderful tone. I do a lot of solo work on these instruments, but just to show you what these are like, are very nice instruments and um, I use them a lot. Let's see. We have other melody instruments here. Um, we have a an ocarina, a sweet, that's called a sweet potato ocarina. And these instruments, I'm not going to play it really, it doesn't play very well, but it, it, they gave it out a lot to soldiers in World War I 
And the reason they did that was to lift their spirits so that they could play music. And this is the way that it's fingered, and this is the way that it's held. And then you put the mouthpiece in your mouth. You can understand why I didn't want to play it. But uh, they do have good ones. This one just happens to be an average one. Here we have, it's called a, uh, a melody flute. It's like a penny whistle, but it comes down in a conical shape. So that it kind of points down. It's not cylindrical, straight down. And it has a softer tone than the other flutes does that are cylindrical. to play. And this one is also a conical, but it has a wooden plug in the mouthpiece. And this wooden plug, it's called a wooden plugged fiddle mouthpiece. And it, because of the wooden plug, and you can see the metal around it, it also has a softer tone. And it's a conical in that it doesn't go straight down, it comes to a point. has a nice soft tone to it. That's what it is. Now they come in different keys. You have, um, these instruments are, are recorder-like. They're really just kind of uh, toys in a way, but they do have a tone to them and some of them do play. This one here cost me all of $2. And it actually plays well in the key of E-flat. I have used it occasionally for solo work, but of course the quality of the tone is not the same as you would get on a regular recorder. to play it is just too great. <laughs> and of course you have instruments from overseas. This is a Peruvian flute made in Peru and I'm not sure how well it's going to do for us but I have done solo work on this. I hesitate to play it because now there's a little split in the mouthpiece so it doesn't get the ear right so it doesn't do that well but I wanted to show it to you because it's quite colorful and I have them in different colors. This was made in Uruguay and it's also a kind of flute and uh, it's kind of hard to play but if I hold it like this the way I'm supposed to well I'm not going to get any success on that Here again, they're harder to play. You notice this mouthpiece is just a little slit. So there's a lot um, of different instruments you can get. I think, and I don't want to forget the little fluophone because a lot of children play them. They come in black and white or white with red trim. They actually have quite a good little tone. <laughs> That's the little flutophone. I think most of the instruments you're going to find in the school system are going to be recorders, the C melody recorders, or you're going to get a flutophone. But that's all right. They, bo they both play. Now, what I haven't shown you in the recorders, and I want to get to it, um, the smallest recorder made is called a sopranino. The sopranino is in the key of F, it's quite small and it's high pitched. And remember, the shorter the, the length of an instrument, the higher the pitch you're going to get. That's the sopranino. Then we have the C melody, which I've shown you before, but I guess I didn't play it so I should. One thing 
I like about these instruments is that it's possible to get octaves on them, and it's not hard to do. You simply take your thumb and you put it down a little bit, so when you use your thumb on the thumb hole, all you have to do is drop it a little bit. So, you, it, and basically, it's called half holing. You let half of the hole stay open. It will automatically bounce a a um, tone into the next octave above. Now, I have two or three of these. This is another little one. It's not quite as powerful as that one. Then we have the alto, which I played earlier, but I'll just play a couple of notes on it for a reminder. the octaves I'm playing, I'm just reducing my thumb a little bit, and you're getting a full octave there. This is another one, same thing. They sound alike, they sound alike, uh, but they, you can get them in different colors. What I haven't shown you is this tenor. The tenor recorder has a beautiful tone, and I was playing in a concert a recorder concert. We had two recorder orchestras. One of them was on a balcony and one of them was on the floor. And I was on the floor and we were balancing, seeing how these instruments and how the difference between the altitude of the balcony and, and the floor, how they would blend together. But I was playing this instrument and a man came to me. All he does is record us. And he said, this is quite possibly the most beautiful instrument I have ever heard. Just listen to it. A beautiful, rich tone. Now, it's hard to play a tenor because you have to get your finger on that hole just right. If you, if you just pull it off or your fingers don't stretch. There's no keys. That's an advantage because you don't have to worry about pads and rods and things like that. But if you don't get your hands right on these holes, what you're going to do is squeak and squawk or get a different note or maybe no note at all. So on the larger instruments, you have to have a hand stretch and your fingers have to be able to hold the instrument right down. And the last one of the recorders that I want to show you is my bass. This is a bass. It's a called a folded bass because it has that curve in the, in the uh, neck area. And uh, it does have some keys, so actually it is a little easier to play than the tenor. I have a key right here, I have a key right here, I have a couple of them over there on the bottom, and I have the tone hole. And uh, like all the recorders have tone holes. Let me play something so you get an idea of the tone. lovely. Now this is not the largest bass that there is. There are straight basses and great basses that are actually taller and instead of having the curved mouthpiece they go straight up and they have what's called a bocal which is a little curved metal piece that acts as a mouthpiece and they have a metal piece on the bottom so you can put it where you want it and balance it and then you adjust that bocal and you play it while the rest of the instrument goes straight up. You can pay thousands of dollars for an instrument like that. This ex uh, instrument was very expensive, but you can get uh, you can pay hundreds of dollars for a wonderful uh, uh, for a wonderful uh, bass or even a uh, penny whistle that's used for concert work. But you don't have to pay that much if you're just getting started. I wanted to um, show you this. This is a sasuto. Now remember, I showed you a sasuto flute. This is the one that I showed you. This is a low D sasuto. It plays a much deeper tone, but it is a sasuto. A little hard to play because of the finger stretches. <laughs> have to stretch.
stretch your fingers to get them where you want them to play the tone. And the other little black one I have here happens to be a penny whistle, a little one. And this one is a little easier to play than the other one, but it's also a low D. See, I'm not getting my hand quite on the, on the holes like I should, because it really requires a big stretch of the fingers. So these are some of the instruments. Um, I have about 180 in my collection right now. I think I need to take another head count to see exactly how many I have, but the last count I counted about, about um, 180. Who would want to forget this? It's an ocarina. Now, ocarinas come in different sizes and shapes. They're considered to be a woodwind. This one has a cross on it. It's handmade. It's made in Peru. And it is made to be worn. And it does play. And when I've done some uh, festivals of music and seminars that I've done, I sometimes will wear it. It has your next string on it, and it has a cross on it. And you can just put your fingers on the holes and blow into it. And there's a thumb hole in the back, a little tiny one. You have to be very careful though because it's very breakable. <laughs> Has a nice little soft tone to it. And the mouthpiece is so tiny, there's just barely a little slit in there. But that's the mouthpiece. I have a number of ocarinas. They look a little different than these. And I wouldn't want to forget the melodica. I have two or three melodicas and they do look different. They have like a keyboard look to it. You can see what would be the white notes and what would be the black notes of a keyboard. And so when I'm playing it, it does sound a little bit um, like an accordion. And you can play chords. This is an older one. This one was made in Germany, but this is what these are, melodicas. So all of these instruments are what I consider to be the melody flutes, and that would include a regular flute, which of course I didn't bring with me. This is just a fun thing. It's a slide whistle. It just goes up and down, and you can, I've actually played a song on slide whistles, but you have to judge where you put everything because there are no keys on it. So this gives you an example of what these instruments are, and most schools will have recorders, or they'll have a, a song flute, or they'll have something on that nature to play, uh, to, teach, uh, to teach instruments. I would suggest, if you want to follow along, I can't hear you, of course, but I can tell you how to play, how to pick up an instrument, how to take care of it, where you put your fingers, how you blow, how you read music, all those things. And in the end, you may end up by learning how to play. Plus, I'm willing to answer any questions that you have. I would suggest that you get yourself a C Melody recorder. You can buy them in any local music store. You can order them from a music catalog company, but this is the best. They do come in wood or plastic. I would suggest that you do the plastic. They're easier to take care of, and um, uh, they're easier to, to handle. In terms of cleaning them, the uh, wooden ones are a little harder to clean. You can't use alcohol on them or anything like that. You'll split the wood. I know a man who is going to uh, disinfect. I was teaching at a school. He wanted to disinfect all of the instruments for the students coming in. And of course you disinfect them after they use them and before they use them and all of that. So we stuck the plastic ones in boiling water. And you'll never guess what happened. They bent, they twisted, they curved. I wish I had some of them now because some of them still play. They're an amazing little instrument. But the one thing you never want to do is put them in hot water, use alcohol on them if they're wood. And so I will be going into all of this, uh, the proper care of an instrument. And so I guess this is kind of a natural closing point for now. 
What we have done here today is to give you a basic introduction of what the show will be like. And we've gone over the instruments, the basic melody instruments, and discussed what they are like, so you have a chance to hear them. And what I want to do from here on in is get more specific in terms of instruments. I think next week, uh, whenever the show appears again, I will uh, be telling you how to choose an instrument, what to look for, how to take care of the instrument, and how to hold it, put it in your mouth, and start playing it. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, you can email me at pat at cheshiretv.org. And once again, thank you for watching, and please join me again.